While Magnus Carlsen doesn't usually lose games in chess, sometimes he loses miserably. These are a few times Magnus Carlsen got destroyed, starting with his match against a teenage prodigy, Abdusatarov Nodirbek, a 17-year-old who was an absolute grandmaster murderer. Having defeated top 10 chess juggernauts such as Livan Aronian and Fabiano Caruana, Nodirbek was not just playing. He was out for blood, and next up, he was facing Magnus Carlsen. Now, while Nodirbek was a complete super talent, this wasn't new to Magnus, as Magnus was THE super talent, having defeated Anatoly Karpov at an incredible age of 13. But it becomes clear Magnus underestimates exactly how good Nodirbek is. After starting the match and preparing their pieces, Nodirbek starts with C4, which Magnus spends 20 seconds thinking about before responding with Knight F. F6. Upon the first few moves being played, the match turns into an English opening with the white's pawns on c4 and e4 and black's knights on c6 and f6. After a few more developing moves, Magnus moves his queen to f6, offering a queen trade to Nodirbek's queen on f3. This decision asks Nodirbek if he's willing to trade into an early endgame, but since Magnus is known to be a god in endgame positions, being able to create wins out of the simplest endgame positions, Nordirbeck quickly declines, moving his queen back to d1. In this position, Magnus realizes it's a good time to attack, so he plays his pawn to g5 with a goal to then play his other pawn to h5, attacking White's king, which up to this point has been safely hidden behind three pawns. Magnus offers another queen trade on g4, looking again to trade into an endgame. It is also at this moment Magnus picks up a piece and starts fidgeting with it, usually a sign that he is calculating more complicated lines at this stage of the game. Already deep in thought, Magnus is spending some time calculating while Nordirbeck makes his moves fairly quickly, his body language looking almost impatient. After a few moves, Nordirbeck has gotten his pawn to g6, which Magnus defends with g8, allowing Nordirbeck to move his pawn up again, just one square away from getting a queen. If Nordirbeck is able to promote his pawn, he will win the game. Magnus quickly moves his queen to h7, trying to take the pawn. While trading off pieces, Magnus makes a quick expression of annoyance. He knows Nordirbeck is playing great. The game is traded off into a position where all material is equal, but Nordirbeck has a passed pawn on h2, which is very dangerous. Thankfully, Magnus still has time to defend it. His first route is to play his knight to c5, which, while seemingly threatening a pawn, really doesn't, as if he takes the pawn, then queen to h3 will win the knight with check. A few more moves are made before anything else substantial happens. Two pawns are now traded off. Magnus now knows it's very unlikely he can win this position. As Nodirbeck has a passed pawn and there aren't many pieces left on the board, Magnus needs to make sure Nodirbeck's pawn cannot promote or he will be in a losing position. Magnus plays knight g5, forking white's queen and king, forcing a bishop and knight trade. This will make it easier for Magnus to stop Nodirbeck's pawn as his bishop won't be there to help out. Nodirbeck checks Magnus Magnus as it's fun checking the world champion. Magnus doesn't seem too happy about this though, but regardless of both players, this game is still completely drawn, with both players playing pretty much the best possible moves from this position. This would not last, however, as you'll see in a few moves. After checking Magnus's king, Nodirbeck plays h7, threatening to promote his pawn to a queen. Magnus could not let this happen, and with little time on the clock, played queen e5 which, while it defends the promoting square, is a mistake. But only if Nodirbeck spots the move queen to d1. He misses it. The game is now equal again. Magnus now takes revenge on the checks earlier by checking the living frenzy out of Nodirbeck. He needs to keep checking so that white cannot promote. After all checks, everything seems to be fine for Magnus. It finally seems like the game will trade off and end in a hard-earned draw. But at this moment... Magnus plays the worst possible move. He moves his pawn up one square, which allows Nodirbeck to play a devastating move, queen to d2, which forces Magnus to play the only move that doesn't result in a check. What Magnus overlooked, however, was that it did result in a check, just the square which his queen 
recovered. Magnus resigned instantly. Noderbeck had forced a queen trade, which after trading off would allow his pawn to promote to a brand new queen, wrecking Magnus's chances of winning the 2021 World Rapid, giving the crown to a new champion, the 17-year-old super talent. Abdisatarov Nodirbek. Now let's pause for a moment. This video is made possible by Morgan & Morgan. If you play chess, often you know you need to plan multiple steps ahead, but sometimes you just can't avoid unexpected accidents. Recently a friend of mine was injured in a bad bicycle crash, and when he told me he was going to talk to a lawyer, I admit I was stressed for him, but he used Morgan & Morgan, which, as it turns out, their app makes getting legal help much smoother than me or my friend expected. Injured and don't know where to start? Well, with Morgan & Morgan, it's made to be very easy. In just a few clicks, you can submit a claim to Morgan & Morgan, and with them, you can submit a claim without ever having to leave the couch. For more information, go to ForThePeople.com or dial Pound Law. That's Pound 529. Starting with this game, Magnus played against Alexander Morozovich, who was ranked number two in the world at his peak. Magnus' opponent was not just anybody, and when the clock turned on, Magnus started the game by moving his pawn to c4, which Alexander responds to by moving his pawn to e6. And after the first few moves are played, the game turns into an English opening, with white's pawns on c4 and g3, and black's pawns on d5 and f6. Morozovich captures Magnus' pawn on c4, after which Magnus quickly moves his bishop to g2, before castling his king to safety. In this position, Magnus Carlsen has already castled, while none of Morozovich's pieces are developed. Morozovich, though, has an extra pawn, and knowing that, plays his pawn to b5, defending his weak extra pawn on c4. After a few seconds of thinking, Magnus plays his pawn to a4, attacking black's middle pawns. Because Magnus has the white pieces, he really needs to win this game. And after Morozovich moves his bishop to the diagonal, a set of pawns are traded off, after which Magnus also puts his bishop on the diagonal. Interestingly enough, Enough, Morozovich seems to have a slight advantage here, and Magnus doesn't seem to be content with his position. But this would soon change, as over the next few moves, Magnus starts creating a bit of an attack on Morozovich's king, trading his rook for a knight, before trading down pawns, revealing a triple attack on Alexander's pawn on f7. Alexander immediately defends this though with his queen, which, after a few moments of thinking from Magnus, plays the move knight g4. Magnus is pairing an extremely dangerous attack, and Morozovich must defend this perfectly if he wants to win. After Morozovich moves his bishop, Magnus plays knight f6, forcing a trade of all the pieces. And while Magnus wants to bring his queen in to infiltrate Morozovich's position, it is too late. Morozovich Morozovich already has too much extra material, and only needs trade pieces off to win the game. Before a few moves later, Morozovich forces another trade with bishop d5, pinning Magnus's bishop to his king. And after a long sequence of juggling around pieces, Morozovich hides his king in a corner while threatening checkmate from taking the pawn on h4. Magnus here has no option but to resign. But this next match is much more interesting, because in this game against Boris Shevchenko, Magnus would play one of the worst mistakes in chess history. Magnus Carlsen moves his pawn to e4, which Boris responds to with c5, and after the first few moves are played, the game turns into a Sicilian defense, with white's pawns on c4 and e4, and black's pawns on c6 and f6. Magnus plays his bishop to e2, after which both players castle into a completely equal position. It is in this stage of the game where Magnus will try creating an advantage against Boris. And after Boris develops his bishop, Magnus begins to create a nightmare for Boris, playing his bishop to e3 with an idea to start an attack after pushing his pawn to f4. But this doesn't scare Boris, as he immediately plays his queen to a5, connecting his rooks on the back rank. Magnus moves his rook to the side, and Boris, after a quick thought, moves his rook towards a more active square. Both players have no idea that they will soon be stepping 
into a bloodbath. Magnus starts a quick attack with his pawn, making Boris retreat his knight to safety. And it is at this moment, unfortunately, Magnus makes a scary blunder. After thinking for some time, Magnus moves his knight to d5, which gives away a free pawn on a2. Boris notices this and takes the pawn with his queen, after which Magnus pushes his pawn, seemingly having a plan here. And after a few more moves, Boris plays knight f6, a blunder, allowing Magnus to play knight c3, which after Boris moves, Magnus will be able to play his pawn to b5, winning a knight. But Boris knows he's messed up and gives away his knight, allowing him to play on. Magnus is in control now, and after some peace shuffling, the bishops are traded off, and Magnus offers a queen trade, which Boris should not accept, as playing an endgame against Magnus is extremely difficult. Unfortunately, Boris has no choice but to take the pawn, allowing Magnus to trade queens and move his bishop to b6. Magnus knows he has this game in the bag, as Boris is nowhere near as good at endgames as him. Boris plays his pawn to f5, after which Magnus brings his king closer. A set of pawns are traded, another mistake from Boris, as this move only helps Magnus get closer to a win. Magnus pushes his pawn to h3, with Boris moving his king closer and Magnus moving his rook up, trying to stack rooks. And while the position looks safe for Magnus, Boris still has a lot of threats in the air, with him playing his rook to b3, which, well, looks like it's giving Magnus a uh, free rook after trading on b3, it allows Boris to get a pawn, which will promote to a queen. Magnus can't accept this, moving his rook to d1, giving Boris a free pawn. Both players now have an equal position, and Magnus offers a bishop trade, which Boris declines, attacking Magnus's knight. Magnus moves his bishop back, which Boris attacks, and after a little annoyance, moves away. And while Magnus is great in these positions, the clock is getting low and the pressure is starting to build. Boris attacks Magnus's bishop again, threatening to win it before Magnus checks Boris's king, forcing a rook trade, after which a few more moves are played before Boris pushes his pawn to c3, only two squares away from becoming a queen. Magnus blocks this, after which Boris defends his pawn with his bishop. Now Magnus has a slightly better position here, but only if he plays perfectly. A set of moves are played before Magnus grabs the pawn, after which the bishop and rook are traded off. Magnus has a rook and two pawns, while Boris has a bishop and four pawns, but a passed pawn, which is very strong. The position will still likely end in a draw, though, unless Magnus or Boris happen to blunder. The two shuffle their pieces around until Magnus moves his king to d3, looking to defend his pawns from Boris's king. Little does he know, this move will lead to his worst blunder, which after Boris moves his bishop back to e1, Magnus plays by moving his king to d4, which completely blunders the game. This move allows Boris to move his bishop to check the king, which after Magnus moves, will win a free rook. Because of this, after moving his king, Magnus, after taking his hand off, instantly moves it again to a better square. Unfortunately for Magnus, this is an illegal move, and Boris immediately points it out, making Magnus scrunch up his face before stopping the clock, signifying the game is over. And while this loss was taken from an illegal move, the next match was even more devastating. As in this casual game against Judith Polgar, Magnus was about to meet his match. Judith opens the game with e4, which Magnus responds to with c4, the Sicilian defense. After the first few pieces are developed, Judith castles her king queenside, and after the knights are traded off, Magnus puts his bishop on b7, making Judith kick away Magnus's knight. But Magnus has a smart tactic here, taking Judith's pawn on g4, which cannot be recaptured, as then her rook can be taken. Judith doesn't know what to do, but then kicks away Magnus's knight with her rook. A few more moves are played, and after Judith moves her bishop to e4, Magnus plays his rook to c8. A terrible blunder. And Judith sees why immediately, playing her bishop to b6. 
If Magnus takes the bishop, Judith will checkmate him on d7. Magnus thinks for a long time before taking Judith's bishop, but he has already lost. And after losing his queen and bringing his knight in, Magnus resigns the game, losing in only 19 moves. But this next game is even more insane, as his next opponent wasn't even a chess professional. This is A, a chess player who challenged Magnus in a bar in Norway. Little does he know, he will be playing one of the most surprising games in chess history. Carlson, with the white pieces, started with an instant e4, with which his opponent responded with e5. The game quickly goes into the standard Roy Lopez opening, with the knights connected and c3 being played. Magnus's opponent then played his pawn to e6, chasing Magnus's bishop away. Well, at the start of this match, all the moves are played well. The first mistake of the game was made with knight g6, which allows Magnus to take full control of the center after knight c3. A quick look at their body language would also show Magnus was extremely confident in his moves while his opponent, who we'll call A, seems to think and consider the moves beforehand. This will play a major role in the outcome of the match, as you'll see in a few moves. In this stage of the match, Magnus has a slight advantage from his well-placed pawns in the center, and is already preparing for an attack after bishop c2, having an aim at a's knight. In this position, Magnus' pieces are already a lot more active, and things are not looking good for a. Magnus has built up a huge attack on the king's side, already being able to trap A's bishop. If he continues playing like this, he will win very quickly. It's at this moment A realizes he's messed up. Magnus attacked his knight, forcing him to move, but after moving his knight, Magnus could trap his bishop with his pawn attack, making him lose a piece. A takes some time before realizing there's nothing he can do, and surrenders his bishop by capturing the pawn. But even though things don't look good for A, Magnus plays f6, an inaccuracy while something like queen g3 would have been better. A plays queen e5, threatening a scary mate on the h2 square. Magnus defends this by playing bishop f4. A immediately finds an attacking move with queen h5, which unfortunately is another mistake as it doesn't threaten mate. Magnus realizes this, taking the pawn with g7 immediately. A is in trouble again. A's body language shows he knows things are getting bad, but he still goes on by moving his rook away from danger. Under pressure, A is doing everything to hold on, and at this moment, a miracle happens. Carlson plays a terrible move, knight f5, allowing A to win a free pawn while attacking the queen. Under high pressure, Carlson automatically tries taking the knight before realizing he's fallen into a terrible mistake. Upon trying to play for a fancy queen fork, he had accidentally blundered his queen, similar to how Max had done against him in a previous challenge. Magnus Carlson immediately resigned after this move, looking very visibly unhappy. His quick moves and confidence throughout the match had made him slip up and capture a piece by impulse. But it's okay to lose, Magnus. After all, you're still our world champion.